Hey, it's Greg Torres. I'm in a pond cypress forest, predominantly pond cypress forest. And I know a lot of, uh, one of the hot commodities horticulturally is air plants, bromeliads or Tillandsia species. And a lot of them occur here in South Florida. I think there's 16 species in the state. Um, the most common one people are familiar with is uh, Spanish moss, which there's a little bit of it just kind of sticking out right here. This is uh, Tillandsia usinoides. I believe, but another one that's pretty interesting is this little guy here. Kind of hard to tell. This is a uh, northern needle leaf Tillandsia. So these are air plants, and they they basically they only thrive where they have enough humidity in the air um, to be able to not put their roots right into the soil to get their their moisture. They can get it straight from the air, and oftentimes they grow on the side of trees. This happens to be a pond cypress. So they anchor in where the bark is furrowed like this, and uh, they're able to just persist here. Again, they only really occur in areas that have ample moisture in the air and off the ground, evaporating off the ground, uh, to provide enough moisture for them to, to continue to exist. So you can see the ground here is pretty swampy, and it normally is this time of year. Um, but there's one back here I wanted to show off. It's actually starting to bloom. These are the bracts, the showy bracts that are coming up. And it's bright red, kind of sticks out pretty well. But there's a number of these. So I showed the one off behind us and it just was kind of sitting there. This one's a little bit more mature and it's starting to reproduce. See, it has some lateral branching to the inflorescence here, the flower head. Right? And then I saw one just down the way that's even further along. Here, it's a little twisted, and that's fine, but you can actually see the purple flower coming out here. Very beautiful, very small, but quite beautiful. Um, saw another one just over here, and there was a number of ants crawling all over it. It's pretty interesting. So then, once the flower is pollinated, the plants, their best strategy is not to have seeds that fall onto the ground because uh, that wouldn't help them very well to get up in the trees. It makes the most sense to have wind-borne seeds. And so you can see here, here's one of the flower heads that have already gone to seed. You can see the little tufts of hair. And even on the branches here, you can see the actual seeds that have kind of bedecked the branches of this small cypress tree. The sea heads are kind of small, this here. And once they start to dry, or dahis, they pop open and when they do, see all this fluffiness. These are all seeds, right? Kind of like dandelions and they blow about and they kind of get hung up on the branch or on the bark of a tree. And from there they get established. So makes perfect sense that the air plants would need to have airborne seeds. Oftentimes they grow in areas where there might be swampy conditions on the ground. So they need to get established up onto another plant. If you look, it's hard to see, but there's a lot of the seeds covering these branches right now. So this is how air plants, generally speaking, get around. Um, there's a number of them, like I said, in South Florida. It's kind of a hot thing to have in your homes, but you need to have ample moisture for them to really, really thrive.